Hi, my name is Fraser and welcome to GPU Solutions. In today's video, I have this Palette Gaming Pro RTX 3090, which was reported as crashing after loading into Windows. From the outside, it looked pretty fine, but as always, things aren't always what they seem. Let's find out what's going on and try to fix it. Before we get into it, you'll notice some changes in today's video. I made a few updates to my multimeter and power supply, so now you'll be able to see the voltage, resistance and current readings on screen. I'll make everything easier to follow and much more presentable for you. I began with the basics, checking resistance values on key voltage rails. Starting with the 12 volt PCIe, I got reading of 443 ohms, not a dead shot, not open, but no capacitors charging behavior either. That was odd. At first, I thought there might be something wrong with my probes or multimeter, so I rechecked a few times, but I kept getting the same reading. So I moved on. Next up, the 3.3 volt showed about 80 kilo ohms, which is normal, I suppose. Then I tested a 12 volt 8 pin connectors. The right side 8 pin behaved as expected, starting from low resistance and rising gradually. But the left side started high at 93 kilo ohms and stayed there. No movement again, not expected. At this point, I knew there was something unusual with the power input behavior. Time to take the card apart. I started by removing all the screws, the cooler and the I.O. shield. Once everything was off, I did a thorough visual inspection of both the front and the back of the PCB. Everything looked clean. No burn marks, no physical damage, no signs of corrosion. I brought in the microscope to get a closer look. Still, there was nothing. I scanned the entire board, front and back, looking for even the tiniest sign of trouble, but I couldn't find anything suspicious. I wasn't satisfied yet. I flipped the card over and rechecked the resistance directly on the 12 volt PCIe inductor to rule out any measurement errors. The reading came back the same, 444 ohms. So this confirmed there wasn't a measurement problem. There was indeed something wrong, but it wasn't a dead shot or an open line. This wasn't a faulty capacitor or transistor. From experience, I suspected it could either be a MOSFET or some kind of an IC, but which one? I went back to the 12 volt 8 pin and measured again. Right side, resistance was rising normally. But on the left side pin, it started from 2.2k ohms and didn't behave like it should. Then I started checking other critical rails one by one. The 5 volt rail measured approximately 319 ohms, which is low but acceptable. The 1.8 volt rail showed a resistance of about 1.7 kilo ohms, which was good. The PEX rail came in at about 5 ohms, which is okay. Lastly, the memory rail measured about 39 ohms, and that was within the expected range. So far, most of the things looked fine, but there was still that weird resistance behavior on the 12 volts. Next, I powered the card using my custom built black box power supply, which you might recognize as my old Tiffin box now upgraded. I turned it on, the power draw was about 2.1 amps, which is completely normal. I then checked the voltages on all the major voltage rails. The 12 volt was present on both the 8 pin connectors, confirming stable power input. The 5 volt was present along with the 1.8 volt and it was stable. I verified that the PEX voltage was available and both the core and the memory voltages were present as well. All the essential power rails were functioning correctly. Then I tested the PEX reset logic gate on the back of the board and confirmed that the 1.8 volt was passing through properly. So all the voltages were available and stable, no missing voltage rails. 
Now, here's the tricky part. This GPU didn't fail to boot. It crashed after reaching Windows, which typically points to a component behaving badly under load. So I bought out the thermal camera to help identify any abnormal heat signatures. And there it was. A voltage monitor IC was glowing hot the moment the power was applied. That's definitely not normal behavior. So I decided to replace that IC. I applied flux to the chip and using my hot air station at 420 degrees Celsius and 60% airflow, I removed it cleanly. Then I tinned the pads on the new IC and on the board. But there was a problem. I couldn't see the chip's orientation properly due to the leftover flux residue and I accidentally installed the IC in the wrong orientation. Luckily, I caught this mistake during cleaning. I carefully rotated the chip into the correct orientation, then ran the hot iron across the pins to make sure every pin makes good contact. After that, I let the board cool down completely. I rechecked the 12 volt PCIe resistance and this time it was rising normally, just like it should. To be extra sure, I powered up the board again and observed the power draw. Everything was normal. To be absolutely sure, I randomly measured all the key voltage rails again. The PEX voltage was present, followed by the core voltage, which was also stable. The memory voltage checked out fine and both the 5 volt and the 1.8 volt rail were present as expected. Everything was functioning normally. Confident that the issue was now fixed, I cleaned the GPU and applied new thermal paste and reassembled the cooler. I then installed the GPU on my test bench, booted into Windows and let the drivers install. No crash. Everything was stable. I launched GPU-Z and monitored all sensors and everything looked normal. Now, it was time to stress test. I started with Fermark and GPU maintained a stable temperature and power draw throughout. Next, I ran Superposition and it delivered a great score with no issues. I followed with 3 d Mark Nomad which the GPU passed without any problems. And finally, I ran Speedway which also completed successfully, no crashes. The GPU held up to the test fully stable and functioning as per spec. So, there you go. The Palette Gaming Pro RTX 3090 is back in action and another successful repair is completed. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up to support the channel. Drop a comment below if you have any questions or just want to say hi. Share it with your tech buddies who might find it useful. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I really appreciate if you did. It helps a lot and keeps you updated on future repairs and upgrades. If you would like to support the channel directly, you can become a channel member or use the thanks button below in the video to show your support. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now. Cheers.